Alright, in this tutorial we're going to be going over how to create this forest scene using Octane Render in Cinema 4D, Octane Scatter, and the Forester plugin. I highly recommend the Forester plugin. It's what these trees and uh, these plants are all from. Um, you can follow along if you don't have Forester. If you have uh, tree models or plant models, it'll work the same way with Octane Scatter. Um, at the end of the tutorial, I'll be throwing in a quick little bonus lesson on how to create fog volumes in order to get some depth, um, some fog depth through these trees. Alright, let's do it to it. Alright, so the first thing that we're going to do here is go up here, make a landscape. I'm going to make this a lot bigger, at a zero. Maybe make this about 650, 6000. Then bring this up to match our plane. Alright, so this is what we're going to be building our forest on top of. So, in order to create an Octane Scatter, we go over to our Octane Live Viewer window, click Objects, and Octane Scatter. Now this is going to be able to allow you to um, add any model into here, and it's going to scatter it across um, whatever surface you want it to. So what I'm going to use here is a plugin called Forester. And it's a great plugin that allows you to do trees, uh, plants, um, rocks. It's really great. So I highly recommend it. If you do just have um, a tree model, you can still follow along. It'll work the same way. So I'm going to start with a floor of some grass. So in the Forester plugin, we're going to click on our Multiflora. Come over here into Multiflora Library. I think I'm going to go with some Bromus to start. Let's see if I can find it here. Here we go, promise. And what we'll do here is we're going to convert our materials into an octane material. So to highlight all these materials, go to materials, convert materials, and then materials, remove unused materials. Now we're just left with these two. Um, now in order to activate the scatter, we're going to drag our plant underneath the scatter. Um, we're going to select our octane scatter here and our under surface here we're going to drag our landscape. And you'll see it's just going to be applying all these clones onto the vertices of the landscape. We don't want that. We want it to be under distribution here surface. Now it's going to randomly scatter it across the surface. Now you'll see that some of these are crooked. They're following the normals of the landscape, we're going to come over here to normal align and bring that down to zero. That way when we have trees sticking up, they're not going to be angled to the ground. They'll be going straight up like they would in real life. Alright, so let's render this real quick and see what we're looking at. Alright, so we can see already that we've scattered our plants around. I'm going to come in here to the Brahmus and make it a, quite a bit smaller. Go into the global multiflora size and probably go to a 0.5 make these quite a bit smaller. Next we're going to go into our scatter here. Let's bring our count up to say 10,000. So now we have quite a few more. That might be able to satisfy me for right now. Now let's add another plant in here. I'm going to take this octane scatter and just duplicate the whole thing by holding control or command and dragging up. I'm going to go click on this promise and I'm going to change it to, let's say, Prairie Blue. You can see we have some different plants in here now. These Prairie Blues are in there, but they're placed in the exact same spot as the other scatter. we got to change, go up into our Octane Scatter here and change the seed so it's more randomized here. You can hit that to whatever you want. So now we have a pretty good looking floor for our forest. I'm going to add a just a grass texture to the uh, landscape here just to fill in some of these gaps. To do that, I'm just going to go into uh, Materials, Open Live DB. Again, you can do this with any material that you want. So this popped up the Open Live DB materials. I'm going to click on uh, vegetation over here and find a good grass. I kind of like this grass D. Let's see what that looks like. Apply this to my landscape. 
and that looks terrible obviously we're gonna go in here tile it maybe 10 10 that looks all right now you see it's a lot more saturated than our plants here I'm gonna go in to my grass texture go to the node editor and I'm just gonna bring a color correction node in between the diffuse and we can see down here we can bring the saturation down quite a bit to match a little bit better alright so there's that now let's add some trees I'm gonna just duplicate this octane scatter again delete the prairie blue out of there go up to my plugins forester forester tree now once again if you don't have forester you can just use a tree model here it'll work the same way I'm going to use uh, the Abe's Fraser. I have no idea if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but that's what I'm going to go with here. Now in Forester, you can see this tree doesn't look right. There's got to be leaves on here. Now if we go into our tree parameters up here, you'll see there's a viewport levels and a render levels. This is just the way that Octane works. It's using the viewport um, as it's uh, where, what it's reading to render. If you're just using the normal uh, standard uh, Cinema 4D render it would be showing these leaves but we just need to go look at our render levels and match that to our viewport levels. so we're gonna bring this up to three sometimes some of these trees the render levels if they have a ton of different leaves on them they'll this render levels will be up to seven or eight and you just got to match it up here so now we see we have leaves now in order to show this next technique I'm gonna add um, uh, light source so we're gonna go to lights octane daylight grab our daylight go to the coordinates and rotate this down about 45 degrees so what I really like to do um, with plants and uh, leaves is I go we're gonna have to convert these uh, new tree materials into octane materials again so convert materials materials remove unused materials getting back to it the leaves here we want the light right now the lights hitting these and there's no light passing through them so they're like pretty much made out of stone which is not realistic at all so we're gonna go into our leaf here and you can see when I apply this we're gonna get a pretty drastic change I'm gonna take the same leaf texture I'm gonna bring it down into transmission and you can see immediately that it brightened up a little bit the shadows now the lights passing through these leaves and showing up on the other side a little bit more Let's see if I can get a little bit closer here so we can see this better if I take this transmission off see it's really dark underneath bring that back in now we have some light passing through I'm gonna do the same thing here for our plant leaves So I'm going to go in here to leaf, drag the diffuse into transmission. You can see immediately those changes happen. Do it for the stems as well. Next thing, we want to drag our tree down into our scatter. So now we're going to have a ton of trees because it's set to a thousand or ten thousand trees. We're probably going to want this at about maybe 25 at the most. find a good angle here you know I might bring our landscape a little bit flatter so it's not so hilly bring this back down so now we're getting somewhere now you can't really see it too much in with these trees or with this grass but every single piece of uh, grass and trees they're all facing the same exact direction so say if I went up into this tree and I chose one that had some branches sticking out of it where's my library at here um, if I uh, let's go with this coconut tree all of these trees are facing the exact same 
direction. Obviously that looks terrible. The grass, you can see it's even gritting a little bit just because there's no randomizing to it. So what we're going to do there is we're going to go up to uh, MoGraph, Effector, Random. Bring this down a little bit. And in this random, we're going to go to parameters, take off position, go to rotation, and this H we're going to bring up to 360. So now it can randomly rotate between anywhere from 0 to 360 degrees. Now to apply that random effector, we're going to click on our octane scatter, go to effectors, and drag that random down into it. Now you can see they're randomly rotated. We can also go into the random and maybe change the scale a little bit, go to uniform scale, maybe go 0.3. Now the, the size is a little bit randomized too. Now we're going to apply this random effector to all of our octane scatters. Again, you just click on effectors in the octane scatter, drag the random down into it. Now I'm going to go back into my tree and go back to the original tree we had, this AB's Fraser, Fraser Eye. Looks like we need to go back into the parameters, change this viewport back up to 3. Okay, so let's find a camera angle that we like here. There, I kind of like that. That looks not too shabby. Might change the seed here on the trees. Go into distribution and the octane scatter for the tree. Might just play with the seed a little bit, see if I can find anything. Oh, I like that. Okay, so let's create an octane camera. We can go in here, can play with a little bit of thin lens depth of field. Pull this up. Click on the focus button up here and just select what we want to pull our focus to. And that looks pretty good. Now I said at the end of the tutorial I would throw in a little bit about fog volumes in order to get some depth fog going on with these trees. We can do that really quick. Alright, so we're going to take this depth of field off. I'm going to change our seed from our trees a little bit so we have a little bit more depth showing up. Let's just bring the camera up here. We can find a good seed here. Alright, so here we have some distance between trees. Okay, so what we're going to do here is go to Objects, Octane Fog Volume. Now the first thing that I like to do with the fog volume, and we're back, a little computer crash based on exactly what I was about to talk about. When we create this Octane Fog Volume, we want to, the first thing that we want to do, since we're going to be scaling this way up in order to cover the entire area of our landscape, we want to take this voxel size editor and crank this up to 100. This is pretty much how accurate the calculations are based on the size, um, or it's not based on the size of your volume. So if this is down at like 1 and you crank the size of this up, it's going to chug your computer and chances are it's going to crash. So we're going to crank this up to 100 and we're going to make this thing cover up. I'm going to go off of our Octane camera here. I'm going to crank the size of this up to be taller than the trees, wider than the landscape, and make sure it goes behind. You can see my camera down to the left there. Makes it, make sure it goes behind the camera so there's not a wall there. So we're going to go back into our camera here. And obviously it's pitch black because it's way too thick. Now the first thing that I like to do is just go to random cloud. It's going to roughen up the edges a little bit. And then we're going to go into medium, volume medium. And here's our density of the fog. We can crank this down. Until we like what we're seeing. I'm going to pull this in a little bit for just that spot of the random cloud that it generated is a little bit thicker. Keep bringing this down so it just looks like we have some maybe mist on a foggy day. So you can see we're getting some distance fog here. Now with the blue sky it doesn't make a whole lot of sense so, so just really quickly I can go into our sun settings here change our sky color to like a white or a gray now you can start to see that this fog makes a little bit more sense. Alright, that's it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. 
This is my second tutorial. My last tutorial was going over the basics of Voronoi Fracture for destruction. Check that out if you want to. Um, I will be uploading more tutorials in the future, uh, honing my skills, so make sure to like and subscribe uh, to see more. Thank you.